Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about five deadly marketing mistakes that cause you to bleed profits, hemorrhage opportunity, and how to avoid them. So we're going to talk about what is the common mistakes, what are the common uh, pieces of the puzzle that are often overlooked that cause many mortgage professionals to lose steam, spin their wheels, and leave a ton of money on the table and work longer and harder than they should. And this was really inspired out of 16 years on the front lines of capitalism, coaching mortgage professionals. I see so many mortgage professionals who are so talented, so gifted, are driven, they're hardworking, they put in their heart and soul into their business, and yet they fall way short of their potential. They fall way short of what they know they're capable of. And the reason for that is because if you got a 500 horsepower Ferrari, but you're stuck in the parking lot with the emergency brake on, stuck in first gear, half throttle, we got a problem. And so many mortgage professionals, unfortunately, have the emergency brake on in a multitude of different ways in their business. They don't even realize it. And so their you know, engine is cranking at 8,000 RPM. They're just you know, putting in the work. They're toiling. They're bl- putting all the blood, sweat, and tears in, yet they're not seeing the fruit from their toil. They're not seeing the reward from all the risk and all the effort and all the sacrifice they've put in. And that breaks my heart, frankly, because so many people's dreams are on the line. So many people's you know, calling and their ability to provide for their family is on the line, their peace of mind, their ability to be the hero for their family and step into that dream of freedom is on the line. And oftentimes they fall short of that because they just don't know what they don't know. So let me unpack this for you, okay? The first mistake you wanna steer clear of is not knowing what business you're in. You know, you get in this business, you get licensed, you get some business cards, you get a pat on the back and your office manager, your company owner, your sales manager says, go get them, Tiger. And you learn how to package a deal, find a home for the loan, get the deal submitted, get the deal closed. You learn all the mechanics, you learn all the technical components of getting a deal done but no one ever teaches you what business you're in. You see, most people in this business will say, Doran, of course, I'm in the mortgage business. Duh, no, that's not the business you're in. You're in the marketing business. And until and unless you understand that you're in the marketing business and you live your day and you prioritize your daily agenda in light of that truth, you will forever leave a shit ton of money on the table. Because when you don't understand what business you're in, you end up pushing paper a whole lot more than you should be because you think you're in the mortgage business and you don't realize you're actually in the marketing business. You're in the sales business. You're in the influence business. You're in all types of different businesses. But first and foremost, you're in the marketing business because if you don't know how to attract quality leads, if you don't know how to attract quality qualified borrowers, you're going to be the best kept secret around. You're not going to be able to help anyone. You're not going to be able to serve anyone. You're not going to be able to help people get into the joy of home ownership. You're not going to be able to make the contribution and the impact that you know you're called to make and you know you need to make to be able to make the income you want to make. So it all starts from your ability to market. And unfortunately, most mortgage professionals aren't taught Number one, that that's the business they're in. And number two, they're not given any real significant support on how to build their marketing sophistication and their marketing muscle because most of the companies out there just don't have it to give. They know how to do all the technical stuff. They know how to cold call realtors, but that's not marketing. That's called marketing from the caveman era, from the dark ages. That is not marketing. So just because your sales manager pats you on the back and say cold call the same 40 realtors every Monday, that does not mean that you're marketing. That means you're doing it the hard way, throwing yogurt at the fan, hoping something sticks. That is not marketing. That's old school methods from the dark ages. So we need to upgrade our marketing prowess, our marketing muscle, if you want to upgrade your income, if you want to upgrade your financial status, if you want to upgrade your standard of living, if you want to increase your standard of giving, you need to increase your marketing sophistication. Simple as that. So now that we got that single most important component of the puzzle 
laid out, and I think I've beaten that dead horse uh, enough. Let's move on to the next mistake you want to steer clear of. And that is working in your business instead of on your business. I can't tell you how many mortgage professionals I speak with and connect with who are still spending the lion's share of their time working in their business. They're pushing paper. They're finding a home for the loan. They're, you know, dealing with all the deals in the pipeline. So when it comes to you maximizing your profits, if you work in your business, you'll make a living. But if you make work on your business, you'll make a fortune. Working on your business means working on your systems, working on your database marketing to maximize repeat and referral business, working on your realtor attraction to attract a stable of top producing realtors who make you their exclusive, working on your reputation online so you get people hot for what you got, pre-cooked and pre-tenderized, pre-sold on you before they even talk to you thanks to your five-star reputation and your local search engine optimization, working on your conversion systems to follow up with dead leads and uh, pre-approvals, and working on you know, people who came into the business many, many, many moons ago, but you dropped them like a hot potato and we need to have systems to stay in touch, to nurture the relationship, to add value. Those are all working on your business type of activities. But how many people in this business actually dedicate at least an hour or two a day to work on their business? Very, very few. Most of us, let's be real, work in our business, but not on our business. And your income and your freedom is inextricably linked with your ability to be potently productive and consistently productive in working on your business, not just in your business. Because I said, like I said before, if you work in your business, you'll make a living, you'll pay the bills. If you work on your business, taking intelligent, inspired action, setting up systems that work in your absence, you'll make a fortune and have an epic life, a magical life, a life of freedom, abundance, opulence, and prosperity. And that's why you got in this business, true? Not to make a living, but to make a fortune. And if you're gonna work, you might as well get rich. What the heck? If you're gonna put in the time, you might as well get rich. Mistake number three is chasing versus attracting. So chasing is the classic old school method, cold calling, that's chasing. That's you know the prospecting method where you're just making outbound calls, chasing people around, and you don't really have a kick-ass value proposition. So you're kind of groveling for business. You have this dynamic where the recipient doesn't really need you, and you're kind of just chasing them, hoping they're gonna throw you a bone. Maybe they'll leave some crumbs underneath the table for you to feed from. And so energetically, chasing never feels right, does it? it kind of feels like you're losing your dignity, feels like you're groveling, feels like you know, you're know you giving up your power because in reality, in truth, you are because you don't have a kick-ass value proposition. You haven't flipped the script, so the realtor doesn't really need you. You need the realtor more than they need you, and they know it, and you feel it, and so you feel like you're not in the driver's seat. They are. You feel like you're not in the power position. They are, and so you're chasing, you're groveling, and you're hoping and wishing and begging and bribing and really just hoping that they'll throw you a bone. That is not the way to get to your income goals. Sure, you can get there, but it's doing it the hard way. It's going to take you 10 times longer to get there with a lot of blood, sweat and tears and fruitless toil. So that is a big mistake that will cost you a shit ton of profit. You want to go from prospecting to positioning, from chasing to attracting. What do I mean by attracting? I mean, why would you chase the mouse when you can just bring it to you with a little cheese, right? As long as you don't show any whiskers because they know whiskers are attached to something that wants to eat them for lunch and dinner, as long as you show no whiskers and you show all cheese, you're gonna attract them because you're giving them what they want and you're making sure you don't show them anything that they don't want. What they don't want is a sales pitch. What they don't want is just another loan leech. What they don't want is just another average Joe LO parasite that's wanting to suck loans from them. That's what they don't want. What they do want is someone who adds unique value. What they do want is someone who can help them close more, more deals with less effort, with more peace of mind, with more five-star reviews and repeat business and rave referrals and uh, repeat business 
and all that good stuff. What they do want is someone who can help them dominate on Google with five-star reviews. What they do want is getting more leads from their open houses and converting more of those leads into closed deals. What they do want is more automation and streamlining of their marketing so they can capture more repeat and referral business from their database. What they do want is to let resurrect their dead leads into hot for what you got leads and closed deals, taking leads out of their trash can and putting closed deals and commissions into their cash can. That's what I'm talking about. So notice the difference between chasing and attracting, total different paradigm, total different positioning. And now we flip the script so that they need you more than you need them. That's what I'm talking about. Anything less than that, frankly, is doing it the hard way. So that's mistake number three, chasing versus attracting. Let's talk about mistake number four. Mistake number four is working with low producing realtors. Most people in this business think that top producers are prima donnas, they're not giving you the time of day anyways, they're already married to their lender, and they're gonna expect the moon, and they're just gonna treat you like their bitch, and they're gonna expect everything and bully you, and they're just gonna be drama queens. And because most people have such a negative feeling around top producers, they don't even bother trying to cultivate a relationship. Instead, they default to the ugly ones, right? It's kind of like in the dating world, I'm not gonna go after the hot ones because they're the prima donnas, and they're just too high maintenance. I'm gonna go after the ugly ones because the ugly ones need love too, right? And they're easier to get and they're, they're less drama and they're nicer, right? So you go after the ugly ones, even though in truth, these low producers, they don't, go, they don't have anything to give you anyways because they have no business to give you. So going after the bottom feeders, the whining, sniveling, complaining, jelly donut eating low producers, they tend not to have much juice to share with you because even if you squeeze the fruit, there's not much juice in there. So the problem with going after the low producers is you end up having to build up a stable of 30, 40, 50 realtors who send you a deal every three to four to six months instead of having a small, elegant, simple circle of rock stars who are doing 20 plus transactions a year who send you a deal, a closed deal or two or three every single month. Which one do you think is going to be more drama and trauma? A big ass stable of 20, 30, 40, 50 low producers who send you a deal every three to six months or five to 12 top producers who align with you energetically, who are rock stars, who are battery chargers versus battery drainers that you totally jive with that are cool cats that you love and adore and that they love and adore you who send you one, two, three deals a month. That's the no brainer of the year, right? Why? Because you know intuitively if you have less realtors but better quality realtors, you're going to make more money and have a whole lot more fun. True? So that's another component and a big mistake you want to avoid is working with low, producer, low producers versus top producers. Last but not least, let's talk about mistake number five, neglecting your database, neglecting your database. Now, if you're a newbie, you might be saying, Dorn, I don't have a database. I'm just brand spanking new. That's cool. But chances are you have a database of friends, family, centers of influence. Chances are you've got people in your world who know and like you and trust you, who you could be reaching out to, to let them know about the fact that you're in your new business and let them know that you've got great rates, great service, and you can help them save money on their mortgage if they have X or higher interest rate. Chances are you can save them on their monthly payments. And who do you know who's a top producing realtor who might want some help taking their business to the next level? I specialize in helping top producing realtors take their business to the next level. Who do you know? You can get referrals, right? But on top of that, you also uh, can have the opportunity to you know, start to put systems in place to mine the gold from your database as you start to close deals because the lowest hanging fruit is and always will be your past clients, people who you've done a transaction with, they're delighted with your service, you got a five-star review from them, you gave them a first-class experience, and those are your evangelists, those are your brand ambassadors. That's the best source of business ever is to have your happy clients beget more happy clients in the form of red hot referrals. That's what I call the endless chain of awesome. 
where you do a great deal for a client, they're delighted with the service, they refer you to someone else, they're delighted with the service, you, they refer you to someone else, they're delighted with the service, and it's just an endless chain of awesome where people are delighted, they give you five-star reviews, they give you referrals, and the chain continues. And that is precisely the kind of business you wanna have because a referred client tends to be much more likely to refer you other clients, they're less rate conscious, they tend to do bigger transaction sizes. They tend to complain less, be more grateful, and they tend to do more repeat and referral business with you and give you more rave reviews. Why would you not want to cultivate more of that? But if you don't have systems in place to stay in touch with those clients and you just drop them like a hot potato as soon as you get the deal done, next thing you know, weeks turn into months, months turn into years, and you've neglected to stay in front of and cultivate the single most valuable asset in your business, your database. And it's not just the data. The data is fine, but your data does not make you money. What makes you money in your database is the campaigns. So you need to have campaigns to stay in touch with them. Use campaigns to cultivate the relationship. Use campaigns to add value. And you don't just send a cookie cutter crap email from your company CRM. That's the lowest common denominator. That's the bottom of the barrel. If you hadn't noticed by now, cookie cutter crap from your company ain't going to cut it. We need to have wicked effective ways to stay in front of them, such as video email. That's one of the things people hire us for is our wicked effective video emails that go out once a week to prospects, to clients, to realtors. You want to have a system to be able to get the client's rave review and get it on Google. You could be getting it on Zillow, but if you're not getting it on Google, you're leaving a shit ton of money on the table. And so Google is the name of the game to get those reviews. And you also want to use different media type text messages on an annual basis, at least uh, being able to stay in front of them by direct mail to send the right message at the right time for the right reason. We call those trigger campaigns where certain milestones are hit in the client life cycle that deploy the right message at the right time to maximize that repeat and referral business. So that's a big reason why people hire us so they don't have to reinvent the wheel because they realize they're not black belts at copywriting. They're not black belts at marketing and they don't want to have to mess around trying to reinvent the wheel, doing it the hard way. They just want to get straight to what works, just stick their key in the ignition and drive away. And that's why people hire us. So if that's you and you're on 100% commission as a mortgage professional and you're picking up what I'm putting down and you're digging it and you want more of it, perhaps it would make sense for us to hook up on a conversation on a complimentary breakthrough call where we lift up the hood on your business. We look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. And if not, frankly, we'll be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, chances are you'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun. So if you're on 100% commission, you want to increase your business by at least $100,000 in the next year, you want to increase your mix of purchase business over refi so you're least and last affected by market downturns and rate increases versus first and most. You want to build a hedge around your business so you're recession proof as much as possible. And you want to build a steady, consistent stream of closed business so you're no longer worrying where your next deal is going to come from. And you want to be in growth mode versus stagnation mode consistently month after month after month. And you want to be able to attract top producing realtors to make you their exclusive without the hell of cold calling. And you want to be able to have systems in place to mine the gold from your database on autopilot to maximize repeat and referral business. I invite you to book a breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Just the way you see it on your screen there. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And what we'll do is we'll lift up the hood on your business and we'll just have an honest conversation about what it really takes to create a breakthrough in your business. And uh, if we're a good fit, we'll show you what that looks like. And if we're not, we'll recommend something else. Okay. So either way, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Fair enough, guys. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, go ahead and book the call. Go ahead and book it at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys. I appreciate the fact that you tune in. I appreciate the fact that you guys continue to invest in yourself, listening to our podcast to sharpen your sword, to become a better version of yourself. It's a delight to serve you. 
And uh, I'm also very much looking forward to connecting with those of you who are ready to create a breakthrough in your business on a complimentary breakthrough call. I know you'll get a ton out of it either way. So again, go ahead and book that now at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Be blessed. Thanks for tuning in. This is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast, and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.